welcome everyone to this episode. I am so excited today for the Women Fully Alive podcast. And today I have with me Heidi Schalk. And the reason I really reached out to Heidi was because I saw what she was doing, um, you know, in on social media and in her business. And I, I, I realized, you know, that Heidi had a story to tell. And you know that this podcast is always about uh, women telling stories of overcoming fear, overcoming blocks to their highest potential and their really their highest joy, feeling fully alive. So Heidi is a is, she's a business strategy coach, and um, you know she's had a story to tell to get to where she is and to do what she's doing right now. So you know one of the things that I have all I have also overcome and gone through my own life was overcoming patterns that were getting in the way of my success. So I was overgiving. Um, I was trying to show up perfect, and of course, you know, this led to uh, to feeling burnt out and um, wanting to be there for everybody never works for anyone. So, you know, Heidi also, you know, she she um, describes herself as a recovering perfectionist, a recovering people pleaser, all those things that a women um, in particular move through in order to become the brightest light that they possibly can. So welcome, welcome to the podcast, Heidi. Oh, Madeline, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, we had an awesome chat behind the scenes, and I'm I'm really excited to dive in with you today. And I'm just so honored that you invited me here, and I'm so grateful to be here with you today. So thank you. Well, great, because I, I think this is something that so many women, particularly women in business, but not even just in business, making transitions, big transitions um, at, at midlife or really at any point in their life. Um, into something new, into something that feels scary outside of their comfort zone. So I, I would love to know a little bit more about your own story and, you know, what led you to be, you know, the success that you're seeing now. Well, six years ago, right around this time, um, it's actually January, uh, six years ago, I, the gavel hit the, the, the table um, or the desk inside of the courtroom where it said uh, divorce granted. And that was the end of an era for me and a journey for me and into a new journey and era for me. And it was super scary. I went, I walked out to my car and I remember the lawyer actually said to me, cause I was crying in the courtroom and he's like, I think you might need to go talk to someone, you know, to move through and heal through this process. I sat in the car mm -hmm. and I bawled my eyes out because I didn't know what was next. All I knew that was that I was a stay at home mom. I didn't have an income in order to take care of me and my kids and I didn't know what was going to be next. And it was super scary. Uh, just the unknown was like paralyzing to me. So yeah. I started before this, before the gavel hit the month before, I had actually found a coach online. I was moving through Facebook. I was not active on Facebook. I It was new to me. It, I, it was a new space for me. I probably just entered it months before. And I found this coach online saying that you can become an online coach and build a business. And I was like, oh, well, she makes it look so easy. She's crushing it. Of course I can do this. You know, it's going to be this going to right. at the same time. The fear was in there of how am I going to do this now that I'm on my own? So I was I did. I'll be transparent. I worked two jobs as I was building my business, thinking this would be so easy. Unfortunately, I did not realize that the scariest thing inside of building a business is being seen and heard. It's really important when you're in the online this space that you are putting yourself out there to be seen and heard. And this was not something that I was comfortable doing. I grew up extremely shy. Um, I liked, to, I didn't like to have my picture taken. I always wanted to be in the background. I never wanted to be seen. I never wanted to be heard. And now I'm putting myself out there on online social media, trying to build this business. So you know how that went. It didn't go at all. So I yeah. joined, I had yeah. been in this program. And luckily for me, a woman called me forward and she said, um, her and I had become friendly inside the group. We were, we were talking in the messenger, in the DM. And she said, I have a challenge for you. Will you accept it? And I was like, okay, well, what, what is she challenging me to do? You know, maybe write a post. And she said, I want you to go live in the group. And your topic is my breakdown and my breakthrough. 
immediately. Oh my goodness. So just the thought of that, and yeah. at that at that point in time, I, I could feel it. Yeah. <laughs> what that means for so many women who are, you know, sensitive or shy or empathic, or you're not, not, not used to being in the spotlight. So, yes. so yeah. So what happened? Yeah. So that's all of me. I'm an introvert. I'm an empath and I'm, I'm super shy. Right. And I grew up in a space where in a time of our world where kids were seen and not heard, but for my life, I was seen and not heard. If anything happened and we were seen and heard, I paid for it later. Um, so I knew there were okay. repercussions yeah. and the repercussions were not pleasant. So this was a huge fear. I am imme- my body immediately reacted. My, my chest got tight. My heartbeat started going faster. I started sweating. I started shaking and I could feel the emotion start bubbling up. My eyes started watering, but I'd already accepted the challenge. And then she said to me, she goes, I will support you in there. I'll be there with you, which means she was in the comments, but she couldn't be live with me, but she was going to be there with me. But she was in England. She was on the other side of the pond. I'm in Florida. So she goes, if you're, you need to do this now. She didn't give me an out. Like there was no back door. And that's the beauty. I love that term backdoor. And we can dive into that more if you'd like. Um, But there was no backdoor for me. I committed. She was going to stand for me and support me. That's what I needed. And so I did go live. And Madeline, when I tell you, I wish I had a recording because I would completely share it with the world right now. As ugly as it was, nobody will ever be as bad as I was on this live stream. I was crying. I was hyperventilating. I was shaking. A migraine started ensuing. My face immediately blew up with the ugliest, ugliest crying that I was doing. And but On, I got while you were live, while I was live. Oh, this all happened while I was live. Like it was the ugly. Everything started happening. Like you could see the emotion just pouring out of me and the fear pouring out of me on screen. So I yeah. got through it. I didn't die. Like I still was alive, yeah. but it was. I thought I was going to die. I hit end and she got back in the DM and she goes, congratulations. That was awesome. I have another challenge for you. Will you accept it? And I was like, well, how bad could this be? That was the worst thing I had ever experienced. Right. She goes, I said, okay, yes. I mean, how, what, what were, this is going to be a piece of cake. It's going to be a cakewalk compared to what I just did. And she said, I want you to go live for the next five days. I said, good night. And I hung up. I like, I closed out my Facebook. I'll close my computer. And I went to bed because again, I had, I, now I had a migraine. And so I needed yeah. to go to bed. I went to bed. I woke up the next day. They still puffy. And I got online and the comments and the support that I had, Madeline was unbelievable to me. There were so many people saying, thank you so much for showing up vulnerably vulnerable vulnerable at that time was wow. a, like, wasn't, was a dirty word to me. It was a curse word to me being yeah. vulnerable. I didn't yeah. know what vulnerability was. I didn't know how to show up vulnerably. I believe nobody wanted to hear my story. Nobody cared. Like, why would anybody want to yeah. listen to me? Right. So right. many people showed up and said, Oh my gosh, thank you for, sh- for being showing up. So emotional. Thank you for sh- showing up. So real and raw. You've now inspired me to go live. You I've been holding yeah. back. Cause I've been, that's been my mm-hmm. biggest fear or they've also said, thank you for inspiring me to step out of my comfort zone today. I'm doing something scary. That's been, that I've been scared to do. And I, and I got, I get to do that because thank you for, for your message. Um, and then one of the coaches inside the program did an impromptu training. She wasn't even supposed to do training impromptu training around my live stream, talking into the power of vulnerability oh, into showing up and walking through the fear and doing it scared. That didn't like, that didn't propel my business though, Madeline, I'll be honest. I still had the fear uh-huh. and I still held back, but that was a memory that I'll never forget. So now the great thing about that moment is whenever I have that feeling creep up, whenever I have the tightness in my chest, my throat feels like it's closing, I start shaking, yeah. my emotion starts bubbling up. That is my sign. That is my that is my green light that that's my next cut. That's where I get to go to next to walk through the fear to up level into whatever I want to create in my life. Well, that 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 is like gold, right? Right there. What what you just that what a story and what a what an example of when you realize that, that this was not there to prevent you from danger. It was mm-hmm. actually a green light to move forward. And when you move through that, you unlocked yourself and you started unlocking people around you in your world. That's such a hurdle. But but mm-hmm. I know that's not the, the last hurdle that, that you've had. That sounds like that was like the breakthrough. And then what happened after that? 
Well, then um, I started building my business. I actually went through, we were navigating a lot in my life. I was working two jobs as I was building my business and my children were navigating new schools. My son in third grade was diagnosed immediately. As soon as we transitioned him to a new school, they called us in right away and he was diagnosed with ADHD. We knew he had it, but I didn't want to put him on medication. Um, but unfortunately, that was the step that was going to help him the best. So we were navigating yeah. through a lot of things. Um, I was burning out. I was burning the candle at both ends. My children were getting the worst of me. My why that drove me, that's the one thing that I knew at the end of the day. My why was I wanted to be home with my kids. I was super clear with that. I knew that yeah. no matter what was happening with the divorce, what was happening with the transitions we were all making, I wanted to be home with my kids. Was it going to happen yeah. on day one? No, but that was the why that made me cry. It tugged on my heartstrings and I knew that that was where I was working towards to make sure that I was able to be home with them when they needed me. If, if my son was calling me because they were not, they, you know, sick from school or going through something he was going through emotionally, I could be there for him and, and shut down and go get him. Um, but it took me a while to get there. But in order for me to get to where I am now, I actually had to put a pause break on. I had to step away from my business, take a break, okay. work the two jobs, navigate, bring everybody together, say no. I had to learn to say no and step away okay. from people pleasing and thinking that I could help everyone. I couldn't help everyone until I helped myself first. So I had to step away from my business, help myself and get all my ducks in a row emotionally and with my family. And then I relaunched my business and I was super clear at that point. I knew exactly who I wanted to help. I knew how I wanted to help them. And I, it, it wasn't in business strategy. This was an evolution. I knew zero about mm -hmm. business when I started this business. Um, so I've grown and evolved into where I am now. And that, and no matter what you're wanting, whether it's the your dream relationship, whether it's your financial security, whether it's your health and wellness, that's your goal, or whether it's building a business, everything's an evolution and it starts with a baby step. And sometimes we have to pause in order to leap forward. So I had to pause and take a step back in order to propel myself five steps forward when I relaunched my business, because I had a super, I had clarity on where I wanted to go, how I was going to navigate this journey going forward and how it was going to best support my children in right. my why that I wanted to be home with them. That sounds so clear to me, like that the power of to, to know when you're banging your head against the wall and you're burning out and, you know, something has to change and to not feel like, to know that you're not giving up on yourself when you have to put something aside for just for the sake of, you know, your, your own health and your own sanity and your children for mm -hmm. the sake of your why, like your why was, and what's, uh, what's a bigger why than your family? I, I don't, <laughs> so that's a pretty, that's a big why. Yeah. Um, but to have like that also, I, I think for a lot of women who are headed, you know, they feel like they're on a train that won't stop, you know, but they know the train, there's going to be a, a train, uh, there's going to be a train wreck at the end of this. The, to actually step out of that and have the courage to say like this business is going on the back burner. This is where I am right now. I'll, I'll come back. To, I'll come back to you when I feel ready. Hmm. That how how did you know when that point was? Did you just know like you know that something's got to shift? Yeah, it was. I, I was at burnout, and unfortunately, um, I don't want people to get there because that's not where you want. It. You don't want to get to that point where you have to take a step back. Um, but yeah. That's where I was, unfortunately. Um, and I knew that in order, I didn't know at the time if I would ever come back to my business. I think deep, deep inside of me, I knew because when you're an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur, you have that, that you, ha you have that spirit. Um, one, I just knew I was connected to my why and my why it's, it, that's where I start with my clients. I'm always like, what's the why that makes you cry? And most of them are like, well, I want to make money. That's great. We all do. But that's not going to keep yeah. you going when the days get tough and it gets hard. And I don't care what transformation you're looking to achieve and what you're looking for in your life, whether it's building a business, creating that relationship or financial freedom or your or your your perfect health, navigating through a health challenge you're having. You still need to be connected to that why, because no matter what you're moving through, there's going to be hard days. And yeah. we tend to feel when we're moving through something we feel alone. We feel like nobody understands us. Nobody else is going through this. And we tend, and then we'll pull back and lone wolf it. We'll retreat. 
That is the biggest yeah. mistake. And one of the things I learned, I'm a lone wolfer. I'm an empath. I'm shy. Me I too. don't like to ask for help, yeah. help, help. You know, we want to show up perfect. We want to show up like we've got our act together, especially many of us as women. We're juggling a lot of hats all at once. We've got a lot of balls in the air. We don't want to let anybody know we're weak, right? If we, if we mm -hmm. ask for help, we're weak. Actually asking for help is power. It's allowing someone else to give the gift of support. As humans, we like to support each other. Um, we need to have that interaction, that connection. Babies need love and touch when they're born in order to thrive. Yeah. They can get by with less food, but they cannot get by without love and connection and in touch. As humans, we don't lose that. So if we're not asking for help, we're retreating and we're feeling like we're alone and it's a much harder journey. And most likely that's why we're going to not be able to get to where we want to go. So asking for help was a huge stepping stone that I had to come to. So I got to step back and pause. And then when I started up again, I said, you know what, my, the, you got to find the gap. Where's the gap and what, what something, why something didn't work. So anytime we're moving through something, what's working, keep doing that. And then also yeah. getting connected to what's not working and getting clear on that and tweaking it. What was not working for me is I was lone wolfing it. I was trying to show up so strong. I was trying to keep people from letting me, letting them know the true me that I don't have it all together. I'm really a hot mess. Right. And mm -hmm. I, if just we, somebody gave are, me a hug, it would shift ev yeah. everything. Yeah. So asking for support was what got me, was what got me to help to get me through my next step, getting, getting in tune with being vulnerable, vulnerable again, and finding that safe space. So whatever that is for you, whether it's a community of people online, I found that I met the most amazing people online. People in my physical world weren't very supportive right? Because mm -hmm. they want to protect you and keep you safe too. So if you're doing something that's like a little scary or they don't understand, they're going to be like, oh, you don't want to do that because they don't want to yeah. see you fail because they want to protect you. I found actually yeah. more support in the virtual world. Um, so I had to lean into that and I had to stand in my own truth and trust that I could move through what I was moving through and that I got it and that God has me. I, I, I just, I, I love that for so many reasons. Cause that's how I met you. Like I was online, like, yeah. and, and, um, and just so much amazing support out there and to know, to, to come out of being a lone wolf, doing it all on your own, being strong and, and moving into that place of being able to accept support because doing it on your own is, is, doesn't, it's not going to work uh, in the long run. Something's going to, something's going to fall apart. And when things are falling apart, it's nice to have someone there to fall apart into or with or, you know, with, with a group. Because, I, I, you know, I can just see how so many women trying to hold things together and, yeah. and the tension that that causes when things are sometimes meant to fall apart. Um, but that must have required moving through some patterns for you to, mm -hmm. to reach out for support and say, Hey, you know, this is what's happening for me. But, um, and the other thing you said was to notice what's working and what's not working and what's not working is, um, is not failure is, mm -hmm. is what I'm hearing. Like you're not failing. It's all like a big experiment. <laughs> really. Yeah. We're always testing and I don't believe in failure. Some people say failing forward. I don't even like the word failing because I feel like there's a negative connotation yeah. there. And so I'm a big believer in every step you take is action brings clarity. So every step, there's no right wrong step and there's no wrong step. It's a neutral step. It's just making a decision. Successful people are quick decision makers. They make decisions faster than the people who are unsuccessful because the unsuccessful people don't make decisions. So they stay stuck because they're scared to make a decision. Yeah. That fear kicks in. So when we make a decision, there's no right or wrong. It's just one step into further clarity. So I'm a big believer. I replace the word failure with clarity. If we think about oh, it that that's way. That's a gem right there. Yeah. Yeah. They'll take, remove the word failure from your verbiage. Like it shouldn't even be a word in your vocabulary. Everything we do is just one step toward future, more clarity in the direction that we're going. And what worked, awesome. I keep doing that. 
What didn't work? Okay, I get to tweak it a little and let's retest it. Everything is testing, no matter what you want. And we talked about, um, you know, not lone wolfing it. It doesn't matter what you're working on in your life, whether it's building a business, whether it's building your, you know, creating that dream relationship, whether it's getting better health, it's important. You can't do it alone. So it's important to incorporate the word and uh, a team into your life. A perf- a great marriage involves team. A great relationship oh, yeah. with your children involves team. A great business that's thriving and scaling involves team. What When you're moving through a health challenge, you don't, you're not doing this alone. You've got your medical team. It's important that you're trusting that team and you're, pr- you're creating that cohesive unit around you to keep you moving forward right. and to get you success in that, pro- that journey that you're moving through. Right, right. And just, it's almost like, like that kind of supportive incubator that can help to, to see you through. And, and also like from that very first breakthrough, like when, you know, when she challenged you and you moved through that, like if you had stopped to say, you know, I, I, I'll think about it overnight. You, you might've like, I know how women get stuck in analysis paralysis, not just overnight, but sometimes for like 15 years. And yeah. before they, and it sounds like, you know, because you accelerated that day, then it wasn't always fun and games, but things started to, to unfold for you, realizing all these things. And then, um, uh, establishing a team of support around you. Mm-hmm. So I, I had to have a question about that because a lot of women find that when they start coming out, so to speak, um, some of the people around them are not that supportive. And, um, and so like, how did you pick who you wanted around you? How did you set boundaries? How did you say no to the people that you no longer resonated with? Because as you elevate, you're going to leave people behind. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. And it's a continuous journey. It's not something that's just, you do it overnight. It's a process. And there's people that you're not going to release fully, Um, uh, granted you don't want unhealthy relationships. If there's toxic relationships in your, in your life, it's important that you get clear on it and you release them. And that's, that's a definitely a journey and a process in itself. Um, but some relationships you're going to just find that you're spending less time with and you get to be very protective of your time and people as women, I think we can feel that selfish, but I don't believe it it, as it being selfish. Um, I believe as it being self-serving in the way of getting you to your goals. We get one go round, right? We, and at the end of my, and I listened to, when I started my business um, for the second time, when I relaunched it, I listened to a lot of Lisa Nichols and a lot of Les Brown. And I just remember this, this story that Les Brown's talks about the graveyard. If you haven't heard it, please go. It's free on YouTube. Go check it out. He's amazing. Um, But at the end of my life, when I looked back, I had two choices. I could either look back on my life and have regret. Or I could ha- look back on my life and go, I, I went for it. No matter where I am, I went for it. And that's how I wanted to leave this planet. I wanted to know that I let I didn't leave anything on the table. I went for it. I did it scared. And by having that mentality and putting myself in rooms on social media and getting in front of those people, I drew in those people to support me. And it was super scary. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a straight line. It was an up and down, you know, navigation. It's been six years and I'm sure I'm going to have way more up and downs of the navigation through the next six years, every time I'm looking to up level. Um, but I had to, I learned to start realizing who I could tell my dreams to and who I couldn't. Mm-hmm. And oh, knowing okay. that you tell your dreams to those who are going to support you and believe in you and raise you up and you hold back that information. You don't let go of the love. You can still love them. Um, and you, yeah. you know where that place is in your relationship, but you start telling the dreams to the people that are going to help you and want to support you no matter what that support or help looks like, or just even raise you up and give you that motivation and that strength and courage just to want to push you through. Um, and that's typically not the people that are the closest to you. It may not be your closest loved ones and that's okay. The reason they're doing yeah. that, it's not because they don't believe in you. It's because they don't want to see you get hurt. They love you so much that they don't want to see you fall. They don't want to see you skin your knee, your knee. They don't want to see you get dis- disappointed. They don't want to see you fearful or you crying. They want to protect mm-hmm. you. So that's where that comes from. It actually comes from their love of protection, 
but you have to realize that those are not the people that you tell those 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 goals and dreams to. You can eventually, but you get to find the people that are going to support you and help and hold you high and move you forward. And I started learning too that when I started break every time I have a breakdown, that is my also my green light. I love that green light term. That is my green light that I'm moving to my next breakthrough. We can't get to mm-hmm. a breakthrough without breaking down. So when you have that, those, those emotional moments or you're, or you're feeling like, you know, this is, might be the end of the road. This is your breakdown because you're about to level up and you're about to break through that next, that, that glass ceiling. Oh man, that is so important because that is the time where, um, a lot of people will pull back. A lot of women will say, well, this is not working. This is a bad idea. Anyway, who do I think I am to be able to do this? So what you're saying is to stick through it, allow the breakdown because you are on with anything like it's like break, I, you know, breaking through a wall, there, there's destruction there and it's not pretty and it's hard and it can be painful. But on the other side of it is, is another room there waiting for you. That's a, that's a bigger, um, a bigger room. And, you know, also you're just that the way you said about your dreams, like your dreams are important and they're special and they're precious and they're sacred. And so you get to guard that dream carefully and share it with those people that are going to appreciate it and see you in, in your light. Um, and, and it's not for everybody to, uh, you know, to, to share with. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. There are so many, yeah. Taking, taking one right to that point and then, you know, taking that next jump, that next big leap is, is really, isn't it, it isn't it to your full expansion. And yeah, and, yeah. Jamie Lee, uh, Jamie Kern Lima. I heard her last weekend, and she said, "You are not crazy. You're just the first. So that's what it. That's what I think about when I say, you know, m- make sure you protect your dreams and you share them with those people or who are going to want to raise you up and support you and cheer you on, because some people in your in your closest circle are going to think you're crazy, but you're not crazy. Yeah, you're. They only think you're crazy because they don't understand it. That's what happened in my world. They just didn't understand it. What's coaching? Why don't you just go get it, you know, go back to school and get a psychology degree so you can give people therapy. I'm like, no, that's not what I want to do. That's not my, that's not my vision. That's not my dream. Um, So they, it's not because they don't believe in you. They just don't understand. So they may think you're crazy, but you're not crazy. You're just the first. You're the first in your space to do it. You're the first to step into this new, this new, this new vision, this new dream that nobody else in your space or your family has had before. And it's okay. Um, Les Brown has a has a story about the graveyard. And it's, you know, the graveyard is, and I'm going to paraphrase, but the grave, again, go watch him. The graveyard is the um the, the richest place on on earth because that's where most of the, there's so many, there's so many, there's so many riches. There's so many dreams that have died with the person that's in that graveyard because they were too scared to go after them. And I, when I heard that, I'm like, I don't want that to be me. That, that right there, if that doesn't uh, encourage and support and inspire women to, to break through, uh, um, you know, whatever's holding them back, then I, I don't know what will, because that is such a, 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 it's a very rich visual image of, you know, like dying with your music in you. And mm. you kind of got to be a little bit crazy to think out of the box, rather than going back to university and doing a psychology, the traditional wait, like to think out of the box, like, it's okay to be crazy, because we're all doing crazy stuff out here. And it's way more fun. (laughs) So much more fun. (laughs) Well, Heidi, I have so enjoyed this conversation with you. And um, I'll I will drop that link. uh, I'll get it from you from uh, Les Brown in in the show notes, because I I think that's a a, a very powerful message. You know, Mm. where do you want to be at the end of your at the end of your life, because we're all headed there. <laughs> it's coming. And That's how do you journey. want to feel at that point? <laughs> it's a journey. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell me where, where can women follow up with you? Where can they find you? What have you got going on? Um, we have, you can find me on social media. I'm everywhere except for Twitter. Um, but I'm everywhere. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Heidi Shock Coaching. You can find me on Facebook, Heidi Shock Coaching. I think it is too. Uh, LinkedIn. I'm also on TikTok. Um, 
and Pinterest. And you can find, uh, you can check out the website. We also have a podcast. Uh, my, my website is HeidiShock.com. And Heidi the Shock. podcast is okay. called Be She, which is an acronym. It stands for, okay. yeah, it's S-H-E-B-S-H-E. And it stands for Be Seen, Be Heard, Be Empowered, which is crazy. We talk, Let's talk about crazy. Remember I shared with you the story, Madeline, about how fearful I was to go live and be seen and heard. I, if somebody would have told me that six years from now, you're going to have a podcast or even five years because we started it last year, you're going to have a podcast called be seen, be heard, be empowered. I'd have been like, you are nuts because that's the last, the last thing I ever want to do. So I just want to empower you, your listeners that you never know where this journey is taking you. You're we're complete. We're always evolving and growing. You don't know. You don't need to know what it looks like or how you're going to get there. Just have a vision hold on to your vision and start taking baby steps actions each day towards that vision. And you'll be amazed at what the doors and and what the world opens up for you um, in your future. It's going to be better than you ever imagined. Wow. What, what, uh, what a story, what a, what a living example of exactly that coming full circle, but a completely different circle. And um, so thank you for just sharing, you know, your experience, your, your wisdom with us here today and, and shining your light so brightly in the world and leading so many women forward. So um, thanks for being here. And um, I hope uh, who's, who's ever listening, we will leave all the links in the show notes. And uh, thanks for being here for Women Fully Alive. Thank you, Madeline. Such a pleasure.